स्टूडेंट्स लेट सी द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मूला इट इज कॉल्ड एज वाई is equal to ax plus b raised to m and i'm going to get its nth derivative so we have the first function as y is equal to ax plus b raised to m now see if i want to find the nth derivative i should understand a concept which is called as generalization it simply means that you get the first three or four derivatives and by looking at those three four derivatives you should be able to generalize the nth order derivative so let's begin with the very first few derivatives so i'm going to get the first derivative say y1 so i'm going to say differentiate both sides with respect to x now you know how to get the derivative isn't it i know the derivative of x raised to n is given by what it is n x raised to n minus 1 so here i have ax plus b raised to m isn't it i don't have x raised to m so if i don't have x raised to m i can differentiate in the exact same manner as x raised to m but i need to use the concept of something called as the chain rule or i can say the differentiation of a composite function so if i have x raised to m then the derivative is simply m x raised to m minus 1 but if in place of x i have a function of x then the derivative remains the same m into function of x raised to m minus 1 but i need to still go further to find the derivative of that function of x here that function of x is ax plus b so since it is not x raised to m i would differentiate by using the same formula of x raised to m but i will differentiate that particular function which is in place of x which is ax plus b ahead of x raised to m so this one concept must be always remembered you should always use the standard formulas but if you do not have x if you have something else in place of x then whatever it is present over there in place of x that must be again differentiated ahead so students i'm going to get here y1 so y1 is going to be m into ax plus b raised to m minus 1 i have used the formula of x raised to m but i don't see x i see ax plus b so again i will go ahead and differentiate ax plus b the derivative of ax plus b is going to be a isn't it ax a is constant goes out derivative of x is 1 and then there you have b the derivative of b is going to be 0 because it's a constant so derivative of ax plus b is simply going to be a so that's y1 m into ax plus b raised to m minus 1 into a so i can write this as m into a into ax plus b raised to m minus 1 so that's y1 let us call this as the first equation now i've got y1 i'm going to proceed further to find the second order derivative so i'm going to differentiate again so again differentiate both sides with respect to x so i get y2 so m is constant a is also constant isn't it so m and a both of them are constant you imagine you are writing d by dx on both the sides so d by dx of y1 becomes y2 d by dx of this entire term whatever you see constant you bring it outside the derivative and then whatever is left the function of x you differentiate that so you have here ax plus b raised to m minus 1 so the derivative is going to be m minus 1 into ax plus b raised to m minus 2 into a isn't it so again i have used the same concept of chain rule or the concept of composite function x raised to m the derivative of x raised to m is going to be m x raised to m minus 1 so here m minus 1 minus 1 you get m minus 2 but it is not x it is ax plus b so ax plus b will be again differentiated ahead of this ax plus b raised to m minus 2 so chain rule or composite function the idea must be very clear in your mind so students here i can say my derivative is going to look something like this so this m into m minus 1 into a square into 
ax plus b raised to m minus 2. So I'm going to call this as the second equation. So I've got y2 now, isn't it? So let's proceed further to again find y3. So then we can generalize by looking at the first three derivatives. So I'm going to write here again, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I get y3 is equal to so this time you're going to get the third order derivative so y3 becomes equal to m minus 2 comes down isn't it so i get m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 into i'm going to write the formula directly now so the derivative of ax plus b raised to m minus 2 it was m minus 2 ax plus b raised to m minus 3 isn't it into again derivative of ax plus b which is going to be a so i get here a cube and ax plus b raised to m minus 3 it's going to be third equation now look at the derivatives that you have got what is y1 that you have got students y1 has come m into a into ax plus b raised to m minus 1 that's y1 look at y2 it is m into m minus 1 m into m minus 1 a square ax plus b raised to m minus 2 look at y3 so y3 has come m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 a cube into ax plus b raised to m minus 3 so can you look at some kind of a pattern that is getting developed over here y1 you have one term and the derivative has come m look at y2 it is m into m minus 1 so when it is 2 you have 1 here when it is 3 you get 3 terms and there is m m minus 1 and look at this m minus 2 which is 1 less than 3 isn't it so every time you are observing that there are n number of terms and the last term is always one less than the nth derivative can you observe that there are n number of terms y3 has three terms and the third term is one less than y3 so in general can i now say in general i can say y n can be written as so i'm going to get m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 and so on i can keep on proceeding further look at this y3 i've got m minus 2 so 1 less than 3 so if, if i'm going to get y n i will keep on proceeding further such a way that i get m minus of 1 less than n so minus of n minus 1 can you understand that 1 less than whatever is present over here when i had y3 i've got m minus 2 which is 1 less than 3 when it was y2 i've got uh, m minus 1 which is again 1 less than 2 so when i reach at y n i should be writing 1 less than n so that's m minus of n minus 1 into look at this y3 has a3 y2 has a square y1 has a so what does y n have so y n will have a raised to n isn't it and later on students observe the next important thing you have y1 you get ax plus b raised to m minus 1 you have y2 you get ax plus b raised to m minus 2 you have y3 you get m minus 3 so you have y n what will you be getting you will be getting ax plus b raised to m minus n isn't it so for y1 it was m minus 1 for y2 it was m minus 2 for y3 it is m minus 3 so for yn it is simply going to be m minus n so this is the nth derivative of y is equal to ax plus b raised to m so if i ask you to get the third derivative i'm going to ask you to get the third derivative so what will you do you'll put n as what n you'll be putting as 3 so you get y3 so when you put n as 3 what is 3 minus 1 3 minus 1 is going to be 2 so you get m minus 2 which is this term over here isn't it so if you want the seventh order derivative so you put n as 7 if you want the 19th order derivative you put n as 19 and so on you can keep on proceeding further so students do you mean y n is the last derivative so this is one very important concept you got to develop in your mind when i say y n it is not the last derivative it can be any derivative from the given sequence now students for this particular formula i'm going to develop three different conditions observe the three conditions the first condition that i'm going to derive over here is when 
n is less than m. The value of n is less than the value of m. Let's take an example. For instance, if I ask you to get x raised to 5, you have this function y equal to x raised to 5 and I'm going to ask you say the third derivative y3 look at this x raised to you have 5 so this 5 is the value of m this 5 is the value of m i'm asking you y3 that means this 3 is the value of n so here can you observe that the value of n is less than m let's see what happens over here so i'm going to get the third derivative the y3 means the third order derivative so let's get first of all y1 students what is y1 going to be x raised to 5 it is 5 x raised to 4, isn't it? Then let's get y2. So y2 is going to be 5 into 4 into x cube. If I still proceed further, I get y3. It is going to be 5 into 4 into 3 into x square. Here I'm going to stop, isn't it? So if you observe that there is 5 into 4 into 3 into x square. So the same formula is going to be continued when n is less than m. So I can say for n less than m, y n is going to be what? So I can write y n is simply going to be the same formula which is m into m minus 1 into m minus 2 and so on i'll keep on continuing till m minus n plus 1 i've taken the negative sign inside the bracket so m minus n and you get plus 1 into students i get a raised to n into ax plus b raised to m minus n so this is the formula for y n if the value of n is less than m that's the first condition that we have discussed let's understand the second condition now so students in the second condition see what's going to happen in the second condition i'm going to take n is equal to m now this is a very important condition n becomes equal to m so i'm going to take the same example y is equal to x raised to 5 i have the same example y is equal to x raised to 5 and i'm going to get what is y5 i'm going to get the answer of y5 n becomes equal to m so i already have up to third order derivatives y3 let's continue further i get y4 now so y4 is going to become 5 4 and 3 constants derivative of x square is going to become 2x and then let's get y5 you get 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 that's constant into derivative of x is going to be 1 so look at this this is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 what is this this is basically 5 factorial so look at this when n has become equal to m so when y was equal to x is to 5 what is y5 coming it is simply coming 5 factorial so let's go back to the formula over here and let's put n is equal to m so in place of this n i'm going to put m let's put n as m so i get m m minus 1 m minus 2 and so on m and n both of them are equal isn't it so m minus m what happens m minus m becomes 0 you get one at the end you get one at the end so it is obvious that before this one what is going to be there before the one two is going to be there before the two three is going to be there so this is now going to look like therefore y5 came y factorial so therefore if i want to get now yn for our particular formula so yn is going to become equal to so m m minus 1 m minus 2 and so on. i'll keep on continuing and m and n now both of them are equal so m and n will cancel and you are left with only one at the end so i get here m m minus 1 m minus 2 and so on the last number has come one so it is a obvious thing that you can understand it before one what is going to be there two before two what is going to be there three and so on your terms are going to come isn't it then further obviously a raised to n will also be there because you are differentiating n number of times so you are going to get a raised to n and the next term is going to be 
ax plus b raise to students again n and m both of them are equal so m minus m or you can say n minus n they are going to become zero so ax plus b raised to zero so if you observe this look at this m into m minus one into m minus two and so on you are continuing up to one so what is this this is m factorial so i write m factorial into a raised to n and I know that ax plus b raised to 0 is going to be what value? It is simply going to be 1. So here I've got yn as m factorial into a raised to n. That's the second condition. And students, the third condition is also very important. The third condition is when n is greater than m that means you are going to proceed further to differentiate for instance if i ask you to get y7 for the same particular function y equal to x raised to 5 let's get y7 so i will proceed further to differentiate so y5 is there what would be y6 students y6 the derivative of 5 factorial whatever the answer is 5 factorial is what kind of a term 5 factorial is a constant term that means the derivative of this constant is going to be how much it is simply going to be 0. So y6 is going to be 0. y7 is also going to be 0. So what can you conclude from here? So when n is greater than m, when n is greater than the value of m, this is definitely not going to exist. You are going to get a negative number over here. Because if n is greater than m, then n minus m becomes a negative number. So that, that, that does not serve our purpose. You won't be getting a factorial notation. So if again here n is greater than m, it is going to be a negative value. So this goes in the denominator. This is not going to happen students. So remember, if n becomes greater than m, then you can simply say that y n is going to be how much it is going to be. Look at this when this 7 is definitely greater than x raised to 5, isn't it? So n is greater than m. The nth derivative has come how much? It has come 0. So here the nth derivative becomes equal to 0. So these are the three very important conditions that you have to remember for y is equal to ax plus b raised to m. Students, so this was all about the very first standard formula y is equal equal to ax plus b raised to m we have got the nth order derivative and we have discussed three different conditions for the nth order derivative so that was all about this particular standard formula now let's proceed ahead with the next formula